Welcome to the Storm Through Anything podcast. We're your hosts, Jessica and Riley. Today, we're going to be talking about canine storm vest features. And we're going to be starting uh, with our very first feature that we offer in every single one of our vests. I know it is the differentiating factor of, of what's the difference between canine storm vests and every single other product on the market. The answer is custom fit sizing process, 100%. That is the number one difference. And our process is very intricate. It is. So since 1998, when Jim first started the company, Canine Storm, it was always built on the premise that our vests have to fit the dog 100% perfectly. Before, when Jim was working, there was models available from large armor manufacturers who had small, medium, large uh, type vests where you take one measurement on the dog with a, a measuring tape and they send you out a product. The issue with that was because the dog's bodies are so different and they they move much differently than humans, they need all their mobility and their agility to make them valuable, is that if the vest hindered that mobility in any way, the dogs would resist wearing it and it would ultimately not be a product that wasn't ever worn. So what was happening was these products were getting purchased, they'd be sitting in the back of a vehicle really having no value to, to the dog or to the handler. And Jim wanted to set out to change that. He wanted Olaf to be wearing this 100% of the time which is why he made Olaf's vest custom fit to his body. Exactly. And back in the day, even though it was such a long time ago, uh, we had sizing kits that were measuring in eight locations. Yes. And now, fast forward to the year 2022, we have sizing kits that measure the dog in 27 locations. It's a big jump. Like that is a huge, huge jump when it comes to the accuracy of our overall vest. We needed to come up with a system that was even more bulletproof part of the pun (laughs) (laughs) to make sure that there was no issues or problems when the handlers were sizing them. Because if you size 10 vests incorrectly and they all come back and nothing nothing fits fits properly, (laughs) it's kind of a big deal. So we've created this vest, uh, the sizing kit to self-adjust on the dogs themselves. So essentially um, when you do put it on, uh, there, there are color bars on the sides of the sizing kit that move depending on the size of the dog. So that gives us the measurements and the answers that we need. There's a lot of people who know how to do math a lot better than me in this uh, factory. (laughs) And it's mathematical mathematical equations on how to build the vest so that it fits the dog 100% perfectly. We guarantee We stand behind that, that your vest will fit perfectly. So that is why our product is different in this capacity. Um, So just so everyone knows, our vests are not adjustable. They are custom fit. Like you can't really, you you cannot share a vest with a dog that's 65 pounds and a dog that's 75 pounds. Like the vest is made to fit that dog specifically. So even though we do have um, a Lycra panel inside the vest to adjust, to, um, compensate for like seasonal fur growth or uh the dog's breathing and minor weight gain here or there. minor weight gain here or there different things like that it does that we have that in there in place but the vest itself is 100 percent custom fit to, to that exact dog's body again we when you do measure your dog just to reconfirm everything when you do measure your dog it doesn't put your dog into a category of sizes that we have here that are kind of predetermined that is a big difference so yes. that's one of the major differences actually is so, that every single vest is individually made for your individual dog correct it's not like we get these measurements and then we put it into a system and it spits out a small medium or large to compensate for that your vest is going to fit your dog 100% perfectly and nobody else's dog in the world that is a huge, huge difference between a canine storm custom fit vest and anything else out there. And having this type of um, situation for the dog that it fits 100% perfect allows the dog to have mobility, agility, and ultimately comfort. Like you want the dog to want to wear the vest. Otherwise, they're not going to be wearing it. You're not going to be wearing it. And all the benefits of having a vest, uh, which we'll talk about in another episode, um, all the benefits of the vest are no longer there. So Exactly. Like it needs to fit like a second skin. It doesn't hurt that it also looks like a second skin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's nothing more more badass than a dog in a patrol SWAT vest, uh, really, or any any of the canine storm vests. They just look so strong and powerful, and you can see it when the dog's working. Like it's not it's not dogs that I would want to screw with. Tell you that much. Absolutely, and our business is literally built on this. So uh, we rep custom fit forever we definitely think it's the the only way it's the only way to do it so that's our first feature Hmm. our next feature that we're going to be talking about is um our 
ballistic protection. What we offer in our vest is threat level two protection. Yes. So what does this encompass in terms of, I guess, things that can hurt the dog? So threat level two protection, it, it was selected strategically because it provides the best protection possible for the dogs while minimizing the weight to the absolute maximum extent. So what I mean by that is threat level two will stop a variety of handgun rounds, such as nine millimeter, uh, 357 magnums. This is the standard, like the NIJ 0101.06 standard that they test for ballistic body armor for, for humans. Uh, we, take those we take those standards and we apply that to our canine storm vests. It's not a requirement. There is no, there is no national standard for dog body armor, uh, but we take the human, the human standards and we apply that. Um, so that that's huge because it's going to prevent injury from a variety of the most common weapons that that people typically have on the street, which would be handguns. It does also offer a significant protection for slash and stab. Correct. Having said that, it is not technically rated for slash and stab. There's different there's different standards that go into uh, the NIJ test. Basically, what they do is they take this massive spear looking thing, they put it in a machine that's that's clamped down by a robotic arm. And they press it down into the vest at a set pressure power. or power. Yeah, exactly. And if the 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 panel is defeated, even by I think it's like eighth of an inch, something like that, it's considered a fail in the in the test itself. Having said that, in the actual real world, our vest had three stabbing saves last year alone, based off of humans who are have you know weapons that are different varieties of of bluntness and sharpness. Uh, the angles of attack are completely different when you're fighting a, a live animal and a dog. And the skill of the attacker, that makes a big difference too. When a dog that is trying to get take you down, when he's trying to bite you and you're trying to, to stab him at the same time, you do not have uh, an ability to mathematically compensate where you're going to hit so it's the most powerful. Like you're just trying to, no. the bad guy's just trying to hit the dog Rip wherever he can. strength is huge. It's, yes. it's the person's ability to actually hold on to the mm -hmm. knife is is much different than say a robotic arm where it's clamped in and there's there's zero movement or difference in mm -hmm. that. So practically our vest, I put that up against absolutely anything in the market when it comes to saving the dog from slash and stab. And the proof really is in the pudding when it comes to dogs being saved because of their, uh, because of their canine storm vest. Something else I wanted to add is not every threat level two protection is the same. Yes. So someone might have a threat level two panel, but it could be a whole lot heavier and a whole lot bulkier than another panel. That's correct. And I argue that we have the thinnest and the lightest threat level two panels for dogs in the world. Oh, without question. I think when it comes to the ballistic package that we offer, it's on average 1.5 pounds. So when you try and conceptualize that in your own mind, like we can't even physically find something in the factory that I could show as a representation as to what 1.5 pounds Ways the closest thing I think we have was something that we found in the fridge and what was that? exactly and that was um, one and a half like s sticks of butter. Yeah. So we had a <laughs> thing of butter and then a half and that equaled to one and a half. So it was kind of funny because um, like to think that this is what it, you can eat it, but it's also <laughs> our dogs have ironically <laughs> they have they have yeah. stolen an entire thing of butter and eaten it. But in some respects, just the weight of that um, is able to save your dog's life, and it's spread out over their entire body, exactly. which is another thing. It's not like we've seen collars that are very large; they have many things attached to it, such as e collars, huge got prong collars, massive buckles. These things alone are localized centrally on the dog's neck not spread out over their body and, and people don't stop to think, okay, how much does this actually, does this collar weigh or uh, a muzzle, a, a large basket muzzle? These things that combined way more and oftentimes than the patrol SWAT vest or any of our other vests when it comes to the ballistic package. And the, 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 those things can potentially save your dog's life and your life, which is the most critical thing. Because if your dog gets stabbed or if your dog gets shot, what we a lot of times forget as handlers is that you're next. Your dog is, is working out in front of you. They're an extension of yourself. So if they go down, the person that is next is, is really you. So we have to do our absolute most to protect those dogs in as, as many situations as we physically can, because ultimately we're protecting you and we're allowing you both to do your job and come home safe. From like, because we offer a lifetime warranty on all our products, which we'll, we'll touch base on right away, um, we see many vests throughout the years that are 
olds that have come from downrange or from different training scenarios where we get these vests and they require repairs yes. of some sort. So we see the things that have happened to these vests. They are have rips in them. Uh, shrapnel has hit them. Um, there's ginormous holes in them. And ultimately, um, we have decided because of the things that we have been seeing that have been coming in, we are now unapologetically adding this fantastic uh, life-saving panel to all our vests. The question that we've been finding ourselves asking is what would be the reason behind not wanting this amazing technology included in your vest? Like we, we've spent so many years, so much research, so many lab tests, making sure it is the best possible thing out there. And I think the biggest thing is truly when you see the dogs working in it, you know and you can understand that, heck, they can work in this 100% of the time without fault and without any type of mobility or agility issues. No endurance problems, the, the added one, one half pounds of butter is not slowing <laughs> your dog down in the field and the do more... not let the one and a half pounds of butter be the difference don't let between that be the, the bad guy and what you put on your dog exactly don't let that be the difference for for his safety i think again you see the saves from dogs happening at such a rapid rate especially last year because the dogs are actually in the equipment and this is the whole reason why we are now adding it as i mentioned earlier to not only the uh, search and rescue vest to our patrol swap vest as well as our aerial insertion vest, because not every terrorist has a rifle. They're exactly. using all types of different uh, weapons to try to attack. Absolutely. Something else that's great about the vest, and which is, leads us on to our next point, is underbelly protection. So the canine storm vest, because it's custom fit to the dog, is we're able to fully encompass their whole body. And this is critical because the way that the dog's bodies are positioned, both on the ground and when they are apprehending somebody is that their chest is one of the first things to make contact with pretty much everybody. So we call that our underbelly impalement protection. Um, alone in the last year, I think it, the underbelly impalement protection is the most underrated uh, thing ever. Like we offer that in all three of our vests, Again, our search and rescue or our patrol swap vest and our aerial insertion vest have this protection. And that three dogs that come to my mind like immediately is Olaf, Jim's dog, who had jumped over a um, fence into a ginormous tomato garden uh, where the skewers are super high up to try to keep the tomato plants up. I've seen that before. It seems like a, a non... Uh, scary situation, jumping over a fence, but then you don't know what's on the other side. Exactly. It's kind of comical. It's it's not things yeah. that when we think about saves, a lot of times we think of the guy with a weapon that's shooting at your dog or stabbing Slow your dog. Slow motion dog jumping yeah. in front of yeah. <laughs> and Fire and flames and yeah. all this stuff exploding. But often the most trivial things are the things that can take out a dog for a long period of time or potentially kill them. And it, it seems ridiculous, but this is just, just the fact of the matter is that environmental damage is very prevalent when it comes to police work, search and rescue, and and military uh, working dogs as well. So, Granny's tomato plants. Granny's tomato plants <laughs> sticking out there, and who who would think that would be the one to 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 take your dog to down? To take your dog down. You won't don't think about that. The other two uh, dogs that come to mind is a New Jersey State Police dog named Butch, who had uh, kind of experienced the same situation where he would have been impaled and. Um, the handler said he would have died if he didn't have that protection underneath the belly. He got impaled directly, like square into the chest of his patrol SWAT vest. Uh, it deflected, he fell on a piece of rebar in a construction zone. Uh, he deflected the rebar away from his chest and it actually did scrape along his, uh, his shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. And the cut is nasty. Like you can see it, it split the dog open entirely. Uh, but it saved him from impalement, like poof, directly into his heart. Mm -hmm. uh, he had stitches, he recovered. He was completely fine back to work in, I think, only a, a matter of, of uh, weeks, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, not a fatal injury, a preventable death. And another dog that comes to mind is Canine Hansel from the Millville uh, Fire Department. And that was literally just in May of, of 2021. Uh, so we definitely experienced that as well. And this underbelly impalement protection prevented him from being ripped open like a tuna can, literally by a rusty nail in a, again, in a, in a fire zone. During his search, Hansel jumped over a barrier uh, of downed wood. Mm -hmm. A nail was sticking up, completely ran across the whole length of his chest. And because of that, his uh, canine storm search and rescue vest, it completely saved his life. When something like that happens, when a, uh, a rusty nail rips through across a vest or a piece of rebar 
tries to rip through the vest. This brings us to the next topic that we're going to be talking about because we offer a lifetime warranty on all of our products. And someone might ask, like, what if I was trying to like what this, but this happened during work. Are you sure you guys cover this as well? Well, of course you're trying to get the bad guy. We want you to try to get the bad guy. We want you to continue to get the bad guy. For of sure. course. So this is why we offer a lifetime warranty on all our vests, all our products. The only thing that we do not cover for our, our gear is bite damage. <laughs> bite damage. So um, if you leave your vest unattended with your dog and he chews it into 5 million pieces, the reason why we do not offer any warranty on that is because we literally have to rebuild the entire product. And it a lot is of the time, we can't even fix it. Like yes. if, if they eat it, if they eat it, and there's nothing to sew to that we physically can't fix the products, which is why we say we don't cover it under the lifetime warranty. When exactly. it comes to work though, if your dog runs up against something and they get, they cut the, the side of the vest open, they slash the lycra panel, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We want the handlers and the dogs to have their patrol swap vests or search and rescue vests, aerial insertion vests. We want them to be working in it hundred percent of the time. Wearing it, working in it using it yes. every single time that you can yeah. and our repairs we try to do them on the exact same day that we get them so um our the way we do it is really efficient um we get the vest back we fix it we send it right back to you and that's literally how the lifetime warranty works um now we're going to be talking about some like fun features of the vests um that involve a little bit of customization so everyone likes customize you got a custom fit vest you got to customize it with with different things for sure and we have a bunch of different varieties of really interesting uh things that we do get so the thing i'm referring to right now is the specialty embroidery that is another feature that all of our vests have so handlers have the um, opportunity to write something uh inside of the vest that's meaningful to them sometimes handlers just choose the department name and the dog's name which is beautiful and if you choose no embroidery like no specialty embroidery that's exactly what you'll get in your vest other handlers get really creative they want something to reflect um their their oncoming battles that they're going to be Absolutely. facing together tons of biblical quotes we see all the yes. time um there's one i can't remember the exact quote but uh it's send me it's that, something, something along uh, something along those lines we obviously often see generously donated by and then the organization's name that has provided those vests. And as well as we see a lot of in memory of somebody in their family who's passed away. And there are always such beautiful tributes that you have the ability for when the when the donor presents the vest to the handler for them to see their loved one's memory still with, with that dog and, and living on. So I think that is really, really special. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing those and it's a pleasure to do that. Something interesting to note as well is that it's on the inside of the vest. Yes. And the reason for that is just for straight up professionalism when it comes to uh, the working, the dog actually working, is that you don't want things on the outside to distract from what their job actually is. So if it's search and rescue, police, military, you want it known like what the dog is doing. However, that memento is for the handler and it's for the people who or, who donated or organized uh, to give the vest that every time they put it on and take it off, the handler can see it. So it's that gentle reminder that their people care about them. They're there with them uh, to be able to, to help them do their job. Moving on to our next special feature. So we offer Velcro on both left and right side of our vests. Uh, this gives handlers the opportunity to either put in uh, either like a police or a sheriff patch for identification. Um, some, I know military guys like to put uh, their dogs like tattoo numbers and things like that on the sides as well. Flags, we see American flags, patch flags, uh, unit crests, really you name it, you have the ability to put it on there. And sometimes we do get handlers who um, ask if we could just permanently sew on their department patches on their vest too, which is our pleasure. Like we are always able to do that as well. So um, that Velcro on the left side, it really gives you an opportunity for more or customization exactly. to do whatever you wish so that that vest is, is truly yours. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna, we're going to be talking about, uh, we I get calls about this all the time um, for just added insight, um, and that is our repelling straps. Yes. So repelling straps is something that comes with every single vest that is purchased. That is already included. You do not have to purchase uh, an additional pair. Uh, it literally comes with your vest every single time you get one. So. Um, People ask me, hey, Jessica, I want to know, when do I use this? How do I use this? And the answer to the question is, these repelling straps are literally um, an additional tool. You literally clip them in. You can take them off. And they are used to hold the dog's legs close to the body while they're repelling. So some handlers, um, they 
love using them and some handlers do not choose to use them. And the the truth is you do not have to use these. There's no right or wrong way no, when, it is it personal comes preference. The, when it comes to the repelling straps. Basically, when it comes to very long descents, so for search and rescue especially, they often use it because the dogs will be hanging from a helicopter dropping yes. into a disaster zone for an extended amount of time. So if you're hanging there, it's just a lot more comfortable for the dog to have their, their legs almost in a seated position. Yeah. A lot of times they're less likely to freak out because sometimes for dogs, especially if they haven't done rappelling before, the feeling of not having their feet touch the ground is a little bit startling at first without practice. So some handlers just prefer it. It's, it's for, for added comfort for the dog. The dog cannot back out of the canine storm vest, though. This is very, very important to know. It is. It is not mandatory to wear these for the success of repelling. Like, you can repel without the repelling straps. It is just there for the dog's comfort and security so that their dog, their legs don't flail as much when they're in the air. If your dog does not care and is very comfortable doing all these things, as he's done it a gajillion times, then you do not have to wear it. The dog, the vest on its own is safe enough for all your repelling needs. Exactly. Dog's arms are completely through it, and it's custom fit to their body. That is the biggest thing. Because... Because yes. the vest is custom fit, this vest will not, like your dog will not come out of they this They cannot vest. physically slip out of it. Speaking of repelling, uh, we're done talking about the repelling straps. Now we're going to move it a little bit forward to the two silent Kevlar loops that are on the, the vest. So you can use these for repelling. You can, yes. You can also use these for tracking. So you can connect your leash to it and the dog can track from these loops. And Talking about more repelling, because this is kind of um, usually integrated uh, both with each other, um, our special ops handle that also has a silent Kevlar loop kind of on the top of it. And again, it is also 2,500 pounds load rating. What's incredible about them is that they weigh only seven grams, but they're able to hold 2,500 pounds. I don't know how that's scientifically possible, but it's like We've created a proprietary mix of different materials and different sewing techniques that are ever improving. And these computerized sewing techniques are the reason why that's possible. The Kevlar loops allow you to be able to repel, to track, to raise and lower your dog, pick them up, even just if you need to grab them and help hoist them over. You have the ability to do that knowing that your dog is going to be 100% secure in whatever situation you put them in. Um, the next thing we were going to be talking about for features of our vest is the backpack D-ring. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the backpack D-rings is just another added small feature that allows handlers in conjunction with the two silent Kevlar loops to attach any canine storm backpack harness to allow for short ladder access uh, situations or scenarios. So you put on the backpack harness, it just straps and secures your dog using the bottom uh, the bottom D ring so that he's not moving around. It's less less movement using it that way. Fantastic. Um, I think that covers most of the questions about uh, those types of features. What we're going to be talking about now is a feature that I am so excited about because this is a brand new addition to our, our vest capabilities, and that's amphibious assault. So back in the day, we used to have two vests. One vest, like one air insertion vest was used, and then handlers had to purchase a secondary vest called the amphibious assault vest, and together they were used. So the dog was wearing the air insertion vest, then the amphibious assault vest was on top of that. Um, now we've integrated it so that it's all in one, which is amazing. There's a lot of science behind this as well to make sure that this works functionally for the dog as exactly as they should. Um, and it's a really exciting science. We've been literally doing so many different uh, water tests. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun doing the water tests. Especially when it's uh, winter time here. And there's yeah. no sign of warmth or pool time anywhere um, anywhere near. But we definitely have been doing water tests. And we found that uh, we are able to give your dog anywhere between three and a half to five pounds of lift on for the vest, for like an amphibious assault capability. So um, that means that five pounds of lift can support a 100 pound dog. So if your dog is less, we give a little bit of less, we give a little bit less lift. If your dog is more, we give more lift. It's there all is... calibrated fully to what, how how much the dog weighs, uh, how big their vest is. These are the factors that, that have it. But if you imagine yourself almost on like a pool noodle, your body in water weighs a lot differently than it does just on the ground, which is why you don't actually need that much lift to hold you up. And something else I wanted to mention is our SAR vest and our patrol SWAT vest has the potential already for a three pound lift. So if your dog is anywhere between 70, 75 pounds, 
you already have that calibrated into your vest. Um, and for the aerial insertion vest, it, in, it is an additional feature that it has. So it has even more lift than yes. the other two. These last options, they kind of come down to what's your operational needs, what's your operational requirement. What's the scope of your mission? So the patrol SWAT vest and the SAR vest by themselves, if you your dog went into a ravine or went into a, a, a small river or some type of swamps we hear a lot of times, uh, especially in Florida, people are tracking through these these different swamps, is you do not want the vest to physically weigh the dog down. Correct. Because it can be quite dangerous for them. The vests on, the, on their own already have some amphibious capabilities to be able to go into these waterborne areas and not have the dog sink like an anchor. The amphibious assault capabilities on the aerial insertion vest is even that much more so that when you're doing extremely long haul swims out to your set points or whatever it may be, it gives that dog even that much extra ability to expand less energy uh, so that their endurance is, is higher. They're able to swim longer with this vest on with no ill ill capabilities. And now because the amphibious assault capabilities are built into your custom fit vest, you will not have drag that you had originally exactly. in our product. So that is the whole reason why we integrated this into a custom fit model. Drag is one of the biggest uh, silent killers when it comes to working exhaustion in water. water yeah. Exhaustion. The, the original amphibious assault vest had to go around the custom fit aerial insertion vest. So it was much wider than what it needed to be. And of course, the water was getting blocked as the dog was, was moving. Swimming. Uh, so for this one, the new model, it's more like Michael Phelps's swimsuit from the you know the 2008 Olympics when <laughs> when it fit them so perfectly, there was no seams, no areas where drag would happen. That the dogs are just able to move so much faster with this on than without it. And then now that gives them the capability when they're done their swimming um, part portion of their of their um, their of their mission, when they get onto land, they're able to work and not be tired. Like they're able to continue to keep moving forward and do as required. And nothing needs to be removed. So for it's less junk for the handler to have to carry around. There's less things where you know you have these two products now and you have to decide, well, what do I do with this second one? It's just all in one. You're able to do absolutely everything from one product. It's a huge benefit. And we didn't stop there with the amphibious assaults oh, no. capabilities. <laughs> we took it a whole another step. And what we actually also did in these vests um, that have the amphibious capabilities is we've created something that we call our rapid water drainage system. So what's amazing about this is obviously when dogs come out of the water, they're shaped in a way where they're kind of like, like their chest is kind of in a bowl. So if there was no drainage system, all the water would just be kind of hanging out inside of the vest. So what we've done is we've created a drainage system where the water can escape very quickly, very rapidly <laughs> out of the vest to allow the dog to dry up and, and keep moving. So as soon as they get out of the water, the rapid drainage system allows all the water to be expelled literally in like half a second. So they get out, it all drains right out of the chest portion of the vest and away they go. They're ready to work just like that. Moving on to the next feature, which is our intruder slide lock rail. So we are the only canine company that makes both soft goods and canine electronics. That is a really big statement, but there's something quite fascinating about that. So what we were able to develop was the perfect base for a canine camera. And what that is, is the intruder slide lock rail. And it's an attachment point, obviously. That is its purpose. It's a mount, but also it's attachment point. So the canine uh, storm intruder literally slides and locks onto this mount, um, providing a stable uh, base so that the camera can work exactly as it should, correct? Exactly. In a fraction of a second, you're able to put on or take off the intruder camera system onto the slide lock rail. But part of the things that is forgotten a lot of the times. And especially because we manufacture both the soft goods side of things, which is the vest and the electronics, which is the intruder, is that the custom fit part of the body armor is what also gives stability to the dog. Yes. So without that, if we try and put this on, say our ID harness with Velcro and with straps, there is physically no way to get a base that's, that's stable on the dog so that when he's actually hitting ob obstacles, he's hitting objects, it has to be strong on there and it has to hold. Uh, this is one of the biggest things is that the vest fits perfectly. It's the stable base already. The slide lock rail goes on top of that and the intruder goes on top of that and they're all locked in sync with each other. So there's next to zero movement. The intruder's placed perfectly behind the dog's head to allow you to see what the dog sees, smells and hears. 
and how they're reacting to those things. And that is critical for, for mission success is to be able to read your dog. That's the whole point of having. Exactly. So you're saying the magic truly comes and the success truly comes with, it has to have a custom fit canine serve vest, a slide lock rail, and then the intruder on top. You have to find, how do you mount that? That's the question that we, we say is that, what is your plan once you buy this product? Is how do you actually put that on your dog so that you can use it perfectly no matter where you go? Speaking of our intruder camera system, we have a very highly anticipated new uh, electronic product coming out, which is called our Commander. And we are in the process now of finalizing design um, and creating a product that we think is going to revolutionize really uh, the ability to communicate handler with canine in all circumstances. Maybe touch a little bit about, on, on that, Ryan, or even a huge part of that development. Every product we, we create, it builds upon the last products. So if you have the functionality with the intruder, what better thing to do than buy the commander to have even more functionality with it? So for example, the commander is a module that's going to allow you to remotely communicate with your dog using a set of four pre-programmed voice commands. You can either use your voice or you can use uh, tones, whatever you, you want to train your dog with. So it allows you to communicate with them wirelessly, remotely. So when your dog's at a distance, you can get them to do a whole bunch of things. But there's also additional benefits such as being able to turn off the intruder IR lights remotely. A lot of times when handlers send their dog out and they're recalling them back, the IR lights in the intruder are so strong that if you're wearing night vision goggles, it'll actually like wash out the, the whole, uh, like your viewpoint is super, super bright. So that's a major benefit as well as being able to remotely activate IR lights, overt green lights, chest, uh, chest mounted camera systems, chest mounted lights. Uh, so the dog has, uh, has the ability to see where they're going and where they're moving uh, in zero light conditions, which is super important. A lot of times we think that dogs are able to see uh, exceptionally well in the nighttime. That's kind of not really true. They actually do need a little bit of auxiliary light to be able to, to have confidence when they're moving around. Uh, so these things are all super important. So the aerial insertion vest is our military style vest. So if you're using the intruder or if you're using the commander, these are military grade equipment. It's being used in policing for SWAT work and things like that, but it's true design was for military. So if you're gonna be planning on buying these products, that's the best for you because it does absolutely everything and it gives you the capabilities to be able to continue to improve your, your uh, canine unit as time goes by. And just to confirm, um, the commander and the intruder are sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> Batteries not included. <laughs> Batteries not included. They aren't included with the aerial insertion vest, but the aerial insertion vest has the capabilities, the commander channels, the intruder slide lock rail, so that you could use those products seamlessly with this vest. So the commander channels, just to get back to that, is the internal channels that are built into the vest to that allow is the feature. For four cables from the commander to run to your intruder, to run to your auxiliary lighting and it's all seamlessly integrated again. So these, these cables are hidden, they're well protected, and it's not a whole bunch of crap sticking off your dog that's gonna get caught or hung up on things. So we think about all those things when we build these products. And ultimately, these are all our newest upgrades and features that we wanted to talk about uh, for 2022. Um, we are continuously building the building new products and building different electronics, um, continuously trying to make everything better every single year. We obviously love hearing feedback. We love listening to handlers. We do it all for the handlers. And um, I think that concludes literally our our episode for today. Next episode we're gonna be talking about is frequently asked questions. I think it's gonna be really beneficial for everyone to hear. So thank you so much everyone for listening. Storm through anything. We can't wait to see you for the next episode. Bye. Bye for now.